Before we begin today's episode, we wanted to announce that we have officially launched our Patreon, where you can find exclusive content, engage with North Coast, and get access to perks like recordings from live shows, freestyle tips and tricks, and Patreon-only episodes. Whoa, you're getting access. For top-tier patrons, we'll even have pre-order links for live events and virtual freestyle lessons. Sign me up. So visit patreon.com slash North Coast Podcast and help your favorite hip-hop improv team thrive. Welcome to the North Coast Podcast, where we speak to superstars in comedy, in hip-hop, and improv. I'm Stephanie. I'm RJ. I'm Sydney. I'm Dr. Bricks. And today we are joined by a very special guest, Mr. Larry Dorsey, known for improv, comedy, freestyle, all over the world, multiple languages. Talk about a multi-hyphenate. This man is a superstar, and we are so excited to speak with him today. Larry, welcome. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> yes. So tell us a little bit about what you've been up to lately. You know, I've been just shaking and moving, wiggling and grooving, mm. trying to really understand my 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 next, you know, the motion. You feel me? It's it's um you don't know where we're going. You just gotta keep you gotta keep full speed ahead mm. so it's just oh that's all that's in my mind you want to hear something interesting we talking about existentialism we talking about um people going i don't see i don't believe in god right so mm. people go into situations when you go in a situation you have god behind you mm. you have an all-powerful being that mm. supports you so you'll be like god got me and that's a very powerful comfort to have yes mm. and yes, one of the is. things i've been thinking about lately when i go into it i have nothing it's just me it's, it's like improv it's just empty it's just me and what I find solace in recently, I literally was just talking about this last night, it just clicked, is um, when I was 18, I wrote in a 100 year plan for my life. And so my God essentially, or what keeps me stable and balanced and emotionally at, at like a pond in the middle of the forest is my, my, my life's curriculum. Mm. So whenever, even if I fail, which I do a lot, make mistakes, I'm always constantly learning, I realize that my 100 year plan, if I stick to the script, and just keep putting them bricks up, I'm gonna look up, I'm gonna have a house, you know? And yeah. so that's what's been on my mind lately, is just that the honey, just just stay true, stick to, I, I know what I'm planning, is something's gonna happen, you know? Yeah. And that's all I could do and remain humble, yeah. Mm. I love that. Speaking of remaining humble, as you nicely dodged my invitation for you to humble brag, I'm going to do it for you. Uh, so Larry is currently living in California, but has been in New York for like three or four days. Since Wednesday. Since yeah. Wednesday. And has had back-to-back -back multiple shows yeah. every single day. Like four a night. Stand-up, yeah. freestyle, every just so highly in demand uh works and travels with freestyle plus yeah. is an amazing teacher he's taught some freestyle classes um for my org black and Private alliance too and just is all over the place you i know you were recently freestyling in other countries Can you tell us a yeah about that? i do it i do it i uh, so i'm um half colombian narcos season three was cracking um, nice. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <That's nice. laughs> We need we need that in Kanto too, you know. Um, so I, I spent a lot of time down there, and you know, due to lack of resources and accessibility when it comes to the entertainment industry, um, a lot of those people don't get that chance, you know. But they some of the rawest freestylers I ever met, and but they real real gangsta. I learned how to freestyle like in the projects with a fire a trash can on fire. You know what I mean? Like I learned how to freestyle with real ass niggas and gangsters. And in Colombia, it's the same thing. And I remember I was with my cousin. My cousin's like artistic, bohemian, kind of like not really. He's from like middle class, right? And we were smoking weed. We was chilling. And I seen these two like thugged out niggas like freestyling to tourists. And I was like, I want to go freestyle with them. This is years ago. This is like 10 years ago. And my cousin was like, no, 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 no. You don't know. No, don't mess with them. 
I was like, nigga, what you mean, man? I was, <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I was like, I have no fear, right? So I went up to I went up to them, and there was that break, you know, that break in the cipher when you slide in real fast, mm. and I slid in, and I was like, da 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 da, to the tourists, and the tourists spoke English, so they were like vibing with me more than they were vibing with them, mm. and the 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 dudes looked at me, and they kind of like had a mug on me, and then they dipped to the next table to tourists and mm. they didn't even acknowledge me and I walk right with them right oh. <laughs> and so I walk with them and I start they start freestyling I start freestyling again and they're looking at me like who is this dude right <laughs> 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 but they noticed that people were loving it right, right? Yeah. so then um, after we did that about three or four times and they kept dodging me um, <laughs> I eventually said like in my broken Spanish my Spanish is like it's, it's alright but um, I told them like yo I don't want no money I don't need anything from y'all. Y'all could keep all the money. Just let me freestyle with you. Yeah. I speak English. They're going to love it. Yeah. Right? And they looked at me. They're like, all right, come on. And we freestyle for eight hours. Wow. And then the wow. next day they said, come back tomorrow and do it again. Mm -hmm. So every time I go to Colombia, it was like a thing for like two weeks. I would freestyle on the street, like all up to tourists all over the city. It's a Caribbean city for eight hours from like 6 to 2 a.m. damn near. Yeah. Yeah, and I that's that. that's like my, but I, other countries too. But that's like my where I started, like really street performing, freestyling, and really. And then any money I make, I give it to like the little kids in the street, like in the little hood kids. I'll just be like giving it away. Yeah. And the only thing I wanted was a big ass thing of water, you know. Just yeah, that's it. The, 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 it's cool that like um, uh, you created like a, a new type of community yeah. um, down there through hip hop. Uh, do you find through your travels and your experiences, like, um, is that? one of your go-to ways of like building a community in a new area is like through hip hop, like reaching out to ciphers or reaching out to other folks and building those connections? I wish. <laughs> I do. I yeah. mean, I'm so blessed and lucky to be here with you. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I didn't mean to rhyme right there, but like <laughs> all of y'all is like the energy is dope. The vibes I've seen y'all show like, yeah. and I got to perform with you too. Yeah, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So like Raquel, like just a blessing, you know what I'm saying? So I, I, I wish I had, been able to have this community for myself growing up. Yeah. Right. I freestyle. I'm a maniac. I freestyle by myself. You know what I mean? Like I'm at home. Like. <laughs> so I, yeah, yep, that's me, right? I was a kid growing up, like in the black hoodie, just freestyling on the bus, like by myself, and you know, people were scared, like, oh, you know. So. I, <laughs> Doug really so, like that. I didn't. I didn't look like the dude from High School Musical growing up. I always had braids. <laughs> I kept the braids. Cool you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I, had, you know, always had the gold teeth. But um, so when I go, the first thing I do when I travel actually is I do two things: is I tap in with the activist community, okay. specifically blacks, right? And then I tap in with the spiritual community mm -hmm. because I'm really in. What's your background? Yeah, I was I, I was you guessing that. So, I when I went to the Philippines, the, I connected with all the activists, the artists, it was, and then I wanted to learn more about the spirituality of like you know they got the negritos out there, right? But I couldn't I couldn't really tap in with them. So what I learned is you know about the coffins that hang off the cliffs. No, I don't know about that. So in the Philippines, they bury people like some indigenous folks on coffins hanging off of cliffs. Like, like about to fall. It looks crazy, My right? Never told me about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, th like, that's an example, though. But, like, my favorite thing to do when I travel is find, like, unique spiritual practices mm. and tap in with the activists. That rhyme, too. I did not mean that. You just be naturally rhyming. <laughs> <laughs> You're on that school bus. Yeah. 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 But I know what to do. <laughs> I ain't no Corbin Blue, but rhyming everything I do. Hey. I ain't no Corbin Blue, but rhyming everything I do. I ain't no Corbin Blue, but rhyming everything I do. I ain't no Corbin Blue, but rhyming everything what I do. Alarm goes off, I wake up rapping. No audience and nobody is clapping. I pour my cereal into a bowl. Look at the calendar, I'm this many days old. I rhyme all the time, I cannot stop. I rhyme every time I step onto the block. Rhyme is natural, it comes out of my mouth. I rhyme in the north and I rhyme, rhyme in, in the, the south. Hey. I ain't no Corbin Blue, but rhyming everything I do. I ain't no Corbin Blue, but rhyming everything I do. I ain't no Corbin Blue, but rhyming everything I do. I ain't no Corbin Blue, but rhyming everything I do. Let me, let me pick it up. 
like some dog poop. Let me disappear, show you what fog do. Let the steam roll, let the dream fall or unfold. Jiminy Cricket, Lemony Snicket. Yeah, I'm picking up. Ali Oop, that's what's up with Steph or Curry. In a rush, in, in a, a hurry. hurry. <laughs> Oreo McFlurry. Corbin, no. <laughs> hop in. We record it. Rhyming everything I do. Hey, ain't no Corbin Blue. I'm rhyming everything I do. Ain't no Corbin Blue. I'm rhyming everything I do. Just like he said, get your head in the game. <laughs> but High School Musical is nothing to blame. Ooh. Man, man, I'm hanging here with all of my people. Uh. But you know what? We gotta, we gotta have a steeple. Uh. We gotta put all of our horses in there. Dude. Give them, give them some hay and brush their hair. Hey. You know what? <laughs> all I've been doing is staring at hmm. your hair. Cause I'm like, dang, he trying to look like Corbin Blue's big brother. <laughs> 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 everything I do. Hey. I ain't no Corbin, Corbin Blue. Blue. Rhyming everything I do. Uh, I ain't no Corbin Blue, but rhyming everything I do. Okay. I ain't no Corbin Blue, but rhyming everything I do. Packing my lunch in some Teflon. Uh. I'ma be high school musical, Zach Efron. Right. Now you know I be dropping them bars all day. Yes. I am marvelous, call me Sharp Pay. Hey. Looking really cool when I'm looking really dope. dope. And I'm cooking, playing basketball. Yeah, I say nope. nope. I ain't gonna conform to your stereotypes. Hey. Oh, my name is Larry. I'm not white. I'm not. <laughs> Everything I do, it ain't no Corbin Blue, but rhymes everything I do. It ain't no Corbin Blue, rhymes everything I do. We wrapping up because we sitting in the studio and y'all was just treated to a North Coast musical. Oh. <laughs> The end tag right there. Yeah, yeah, I like yeah. it. Get yeah. your, get your, get your like, head like in the it. game. Was that yeah. his song? Get your head in the game. I felt I like that so. was a game. Or I think so. Me, yeah, him or Zach. One of those two. Yeah, yeah. I think it was both of them. It was I both. feel like Corbin know, got his. He finally got his own song, and then maybe the second movie. We're mm -hmm. scratching an itch that was twelve years. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I know all the words to Sharpay's song. I want it all. The in High School Musical three. That one. No, the High School Musical three one. Have oh, you seen I don't High School know Musical that one. 3? I haven't seen any of them. He just knows he looks like that. I just. That's the first thing people say to me. You'll oh. just be traveling, be like Corbin Blue. Yeah, You're yeah. like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, in the know. Philippines, they call me Bob Marley. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, Bob Marley, Bob Marley. Yeah. 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 And then I take pictures with him and shit. It was, it was dope. It was dope. I loved it. Yeah, earlier you said negritos. Can you, negritos, uh, yeah. yeah can, what, um, can you tell, elaborate more on that? What that term means? So you know, I actually have a discrepancy with some of the um, African Americans who try to remove themselves from Africa, right? Mm. And they, a lot of them try to be like, we're the real Native Americans. And so I minored in Native American. Um, studies mm. so because my mom's south american she's indigenous too though right mm. so um the thing about it is because we all come from africa we all come from the black woman right i stopped saying mm -hmm. god bless you when people sneeze i say the black woman blesses you Ooh, so mm -hmm. okay. Love it. Love it. <laughs> because of that um you know everywhere in the world there's been black people right as an in indigenous people so in the philippines there's indigenous people called negritos okay. and they're black so and you can see some Filipinos have darker pigmentation, okay. but there's actual black Filipinos with afros okay. and all through Asia. You're going to find that. Right. Even in Japan, there's ancient black people mm -hmm. like just because we all come from that. You know, Australia has the oldest, um, um, you know, ancestry outside of Africa. Like, I think it's 80,000 years. Mm -hmm. Right. And so if you look at Australians, how do they look? They look like they're African. Right. And they're the oldest group outside of Africa. Mm -hmm. So we there's Africans everywhere. And so Negritos are the Africans of the Philippines and they're still around. So that's a beautiful thing. So you can see it. You know, okay. my wow. parents didn't tell me about them. Either. <laughs> <laughs> so You're like, I'm, I'm black. I'm not I'm not <laughs> You, you touched on something earlier. Um, uh, I, I identify as atheist. Um, okay. Uh, but I'm I'm one percent Christian when I'm flying. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yup. Yeah. What's, what's that phrase called? You ain't gonna you gonna find God in the um in the dog hole or what's that? What's that? I, I don't know. Y'all know the war. It's a war. It's a war thing in the in the. 
in the pit. Not in the trenches? In the, the trenches. Fox, fox, fox hole. Fox hole. I, something I don't know, Jesus I, in the fox hole or something? Something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, my fox hole is a plane. Uh, I'm going to find God in the plane. Uh, as I'm trying to keep that plane up with my mind powers. Um, oh. But, but anyway, um, I was just, uh, I, I did my master's degree, and part of what I studied was um, atheist student development. Hmm. And basically, the overarching thing is that it's very understudied um, in regards to, uh, you know, uh, kids maybe coming from a religious background or maybe not, and then forming their own. Uh, opinion about religion and their own uh, theological belief system um, and they usually don't have a lot of support with that because mm. there's that's usually especially back where I'm from down in Texas like very Christian type of place mm -hmm. and so you know you didn't even you didn't talk about religion it was like assume that you were Christian or maybe Catholic or something yeah. like that mm -hmm. and so growing up I never had any peers any counselors any mentors that were that understood what I was going through um, and part of the development, like Smith's um, atheist development theory, is that um, when students start exploring that, they usually become more like, oh, this is wrong, and I'm right, and then they become kind of like militant about it in a way. Because um, they don't have support? Yeah, because they don't have support. Um, it's Ooh. like, because they feel like it's them against the world in a way. Oh. You know what I mean? Like these these thoughts that I'm forming are... So like, atheists right. feel like niggas. Pretty much. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 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 regardless, yeah, regardless of the race, yeah. For sure. Um, so I was just wondering if you, um, you know, can you, if you feel okay diving into it just a little bit, um, how was your path to getting to your belief system, if you want to talk about this a little bit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, my, so my dad and my mom, my dad was raised, you know, in Texas like you, mm. and he was raised Christian, the black, like I've been to the churches down there where my family goes, it's motherfuckers with permanent gold teeth, mm. got the wow. candy can paint car with the rims, you know, yeah. with the, this, uh, ow, you know, the singers and all, the Medea, Tyler Perry type stuff, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So I've been there and my dad was raised like that. But um, after my, uh, you know, my family was a lot of pain and stuff. My uncle had got murdered. I'm, I'm, my middle, I'm named, my middle name's after him. After he got murdered, my dad couldn't find, you know, he couldn't find the peace with um, mm. Christianity, and so he converted to uh, being a Muslim, okay. like Malcolm X, Muhammad Ali, Muslim, you know. And so, um, but my mom grew up in a Catholic. She was sent to boarding school, and then you know, yeah. she she just she she became a lawyer out there. And when she did that, she became radicalized, mm. and it changed her whole like Christianity was brought by the 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 colonizer, the imperialistic in the United States, mm. and so my mom switched her mind, you know, and she became more like in touch with her Native American spirituality. Okay, um, and so they both ra they both raised my brother and I to be just open minded and free about it. Yeah, mm. yeah. So that's that's how I came to it. But you know, it's crazy, is um. When people find out that I'm not religious, right? You know, you know, my whole life, I've gotten, along, I've always been cool with everybody. Yeah. Like Raquel was talking about popularity and stuff. I, I've never been like the popular kid, but I was cool. I was like the star basketball player. I was cool with everybody, but I spent my lunches in the library. Oh, you know, that okay. was that was who I was. I was like a kind of strange person because I felt like everybody was trying to differentiate themselves physically, right? They were trying to dress this way or do that or get a tattoo or do it. And, and nothing wrong with that. Everybody was trying to do certain things mentally, get smart as hell. And me, I was like, I want to separate myself spiritually mm -hmm. from everybody growing up. And um, so that was like my... Like that's that was my path with it. And um so I remember I was doing a TV show for TNT with Tay Diggs, right? Oh, nice little and brag. We was we was <laughs> we was in with all humility. <laughs> we was in the projects in San Francisco, right? And I'm loyal to the soil, born and raised in the city. I'm a city kid, right? And I'm so deep in it, I gotta crawl into my shoes when I wake up in the morning. So um <laughs> so <laughs> so <laughs> We're in the projects, and we're, it's a bunch of actors, and we're walking in. We're all black, though. It's supposed to be a hood scene, right? right? We're walking in. We're all joking, laughing, whatever. And then this black woman, oh, man, I love it. She goes, she, you know, real hood, right? She goes, y'all niggas ain't gangsters, right? <laughs> and this, like, the TV set is like, oh, what do we do, right? And then she's like, y'all ain't good. These niggas soft, man. Like, she going, like, you know, she going off on everybody. And, like, the TV producer was like, maybe we should get some of the people from the projects to, like, be in the TV show, make it more authentic. Mm -hmm. And they gave, like, on-the-spot contracts to hella people, employed them right there, right? Okay. Wow. And so after we shot, 
I'm walking back to like the trailers, like we about to get a bus to the catering, right? And I'm walking back and one of the producers comes up to me <laughs> and she goes, thank you so much for your time. You could go back home now, right? Ooh. And I'm all like, <laughs> and I'm all like, oh no, I was trying to get the food. And she was like, oh no, 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 the food's not for you. And I was like, nah, but I'm one of the actors. And then she goes, I know you're one of the actors. <laughs> oh, dang, that sucks. And I'm all like, I'm like, what? Right? And I'm looking around like, damn, nobody can back me up. I ain't got no proof. Oh. Right? And then, uh, uh, like, that split second, every, like, all the main actors come start walking towards me. Right? And they're like, oh, what's up, Larry? Ah, right? And I'm like, what's up, y'all? And then she kind of, it clicked for her. Right? And then she go, she just walked away. You know, they, mm. they never apologized. Right? And so yeah. we're walking to the car. We get in the van. And I told them what happened. And they're all like, yo, you better thank God for that. And I was like, nah, I thank you. Right, and they're like, "No, you thank God." I was like, "I don't believe in God," mm -hmm. and the, and the whole crowd said, "The whole car, you know, nigga, what?" And then I was like, "I don't believe in the devil either." And someone's like, "This nigga don't believe in the devil." <laughs> like, why would I believe in an evil being? You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't want to put my energy in that. It's yeah. So well, yeah, that. Oh, sorry. Go for oh, it. Go yeah. for it. Educationally speaking whether you're religious or not, I think it's so great of the critical analysis of something. Mm -hmm. And if you can instill that in kids, then they can start to think for themselves mm -hmm. and then also take in other people's ideas with more respect and humility mm -hmm. than being like, no, it's black and white, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. yes. Or my ideas that I'm trying to formulate because I'm a young person aren't going to be respected at all. I think that could lead to more negative connotation than anything. But um, I come from a science background and I remember I had to get a physical uh, when I got done with high school and I was about to go to college and my physician, my mom was like, oh yeah, she's going to study physics. And the physician was like, all right, you're going to go do that outer space stuff. Don't stop believing in God. And I'm like, I didn't even say anything. Oh I didn't even say anything. But what's so interesting is that you were talking about your plan. And I love this idea because whether you're religious or not, there's free will, or at least how I look at it, there's free will. And in science and especially in physics, there's always a cause and effect. There's always something that happens and then something that um, expels from that chemical reaction, physical reaction, whatever happens. Any type of energy in any space within physics, um, energy is created and expelled. And it's like, so every decision we make, there's something that's going to happen to that. Uh, whether it comes from a religious perspective or not, the universe is going to keep continuing forward in this beautiful way of expansion. So it's like, I have always been like uh, more spiritual than religious, but I grew up in that church. My mom was like, yes, baby! I was doing <laughs> praise dance and running around. And my mom, anytime I like complain, she's just like, well, you haven't been to church in a while. And I'm like, okay, yeah, that's yeah. totally what mental health needs is <laughs> mm -hmm. I just need to make more time in my schedule to go to church. But um, she just thinks like, like you just need to find a nice Christian man. And I'm like, okay. Well. <laughs> but what I think is beautiful is just like understanding that whether wherever you're coming from that there's this beautiful thing of like everything is just going to keep going and that energy is going to go somewhere and that's more comforting for me at least that like okay I'm just going to make a decision and I know that something's going to happen from it and we'll just go from there and keep trying to build better things in our lives hmm. and learn I don't know yeah I'm, I'm in accordance yeah I dig that I want to go back a little bit to that story you just told which first of all that is so completely inappropriate and terrible that that woman made that assumption. Um, but also for me, listening to that as a black person who grew up very much in the suburbs in majority white areas, there's a little bit of envy too. Mm -hmm. Like, oh man, like you really fit in that much? If I was there, she'd be been like, you get back on the bus. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you do not belong here. Um, <laughs> so, so, so yeah, so there's a little bit of jealousy of like, oh wow, like you really, you know, you, you really were able to fully blend in. And so for me as someone who had to kind of learn to code switch more effectively in black communities and and find my way to fit in and to blend there mm -hmm. i'm wondering um you know coming from your background growing up around more black people and in more urban environments and now doing this work which brings you to all kinds of different places and i know that you're you know on stages in front of thousands of people and in very corporate environments and 
and of course, you know, going back home also, but balancing both. How have you found balance in code switching and in maintaining your authentic identity while also stepping up into these big, high paying corporate spaces that you're invited into for your talent as well? It's complex. Yeah. Uh, many thoughts came to my mind when you said that. Um, are y'all familiar with Amiri Baraka? Mm -hmm. A little bit. Um, he's considered one of the greatest African-American poets of all time. He was around during the civil rights era. He was like the, one of the poets of the civil rights era. Um, and he wrote a book called Blues People about the soul of African-Americans and how it is still connected to West Africa. Mm -hmm. So the essence is still there. So when you say somebody is whitewashed, right? It's all circumstantial because somebody could be quote unquote whitewashed, but have the spirit of West Africa still within them and you could feel it, right? Mm -hmm. Or somebody could be whitewashed and be completely ethnically cleansed, which is, which is a process that they've tried hard. You know what I mean? Like that's, mm -hmm. you know, Native American, they would say, kill the savage save the man that was the phrase like mm -hmm. of all the hundreds of years the boarding mm -hmm. schools everything kill the man save the uh kill the savage save the man and so ethnic cleansing is a whole process that removes that spirit of west africa so so all the, my black people in here you got the spirit of west africa still in you so even though you're saying like you don't connect you still have that essence you know you're not fucking he <laughs> like fucking and even if you were you could still have that spirit right yeah. but you're not like out here cooning and like going against your people right and that's like yeah. that's a big thing um for me i'll to go further into that question is is i always took a tupac like tupac was the perfect representation to me and the reason they say he's the greatest rapper is not because he had the best lyrics or the best, he has hits, but it wasn't because of that. It's because he was his mom was a Black Panther. They're doing a series on, on her and coming out on Netflix, and so oh, wow. it's gonna be so dope. But his mom put that, he was in the womb when she was in prison as a political, you know what I mean? Like, so Tupac said, he was, he was so after the civil rights era, we were in a state of hopelessness because we lost, right? We, we, our leaders got killed, everything got destroyed. And Tupac represented the civil rights era's hopelessness. That's what I consider it, right? And so Tupac, in one of his interviews, he goes, I'm finna do this because that's what niggas do. I'm finna do this because that's what niggas do. And he was very, like, just adamant about it and enthusiastic and just passion, right? And I was like, because that's what niggas do. And if you listen to him, he talks about how he dumbed down his lyrics because he was super intellectual. He dumbed them down so that he could still connect to the hood. And so for me, when I navigate these spaces, it's the, like I said, it's complex because I try to find that balance of being able to show that I'm articulate and I'm intelligent. I got multiple college degrees. You know what I mean? I could hoo hoo. I could go to the ins and outs and outs and ins. And so it's, ah, ha, ha. But I, I would rather, I would prefer to be able to, so that the common person could still understand me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'll drop a little smart word here and there or something like that, but I'd rather be like, you know, giving that, that woo, you know what I'm saying? Giving that uh, barbecue or mildew, you know, roll killer dollar bills, like some like some real like slanguage, slango when I talk mm -hmm. so that so, so that streets could still feel me. That's a, Richard Pryor, Richard mm -hmm. Pryor had a personal cultural expert. And for people who watch in the podcast don't know who Richard Pryor is, he's considered the greatest comedian of all time. George Carlin is right behind him. I used to say George Carlin was better until one of my friends, I've, when I was 18, I knew 30 people who'd been either murdered or died by the time I was 18. I know so many people who got killed or who died. One of my friends had died. I had seven comedy shows that night. So when I lit, when, before I do comedy, I, pl I put on comedy radio, get me in that routine, get me in that woo woo, -woo right? But be, but the problem was I couldn't listen to comedy. I just found out my friend died. So I'm just like, damn, what do I do to get in the mood? Like, usually I'll play some Miles Davis or some Fela Kuti, like get, and it'll, it'll get my vibrations, my frequencies in line, right, to when I'm feeling somber and melancholy. But I didn't, I couldn't play that. I'm like, I got I to gotta be funny, right? Yeah. And so I was like, who's a comedian that gets you in that mood? And the only person I could think of was Richard Pryor. And that's when it clicked. I was like, that's why they say he's the best. Because he's the only person who could get you in an emotional, like, sad place, but also make you laugh 
at the same time. Mm-hmm. And so I put some Richard Pryor on, and I was like, oh, I needed that. But Richard Pryor had a cultural expert that he kept around that would, when he's doing scenes, movies, whatever, would, would tell him if he was selling out or not. Ooh. Wow. Oh, really? Yes. So that's how deep he was because he didn't want to, like, like Kevin Hart all love, like, I'm – I'm a big fan. But a lot of like people in the hood say they don't mess with him because they feel like when he crossed over into universal, mm-hmm. not just black humor, mm-hmm. that he lost the the appeal to black people. Mm-hmm. Right? Kendrick Lamar's newest album. If you listen to hood reviews of Kendrick Lamar's newest mm-hmm. album, it wasn't great, right? I liked it, right? You know, other people, it was very artistic. It, too, yeah. it was, it was, it was, you know, reflective. But like hood niggas would be like, nigga, ain't nobody slapping this, right? I ain't finna <laughs> play this on no car, right? You know, and you know, so, and I'm not saying Kendrick Lamar was removed from it either, right? He might have just reached a whole new plane. And sometimes, you know, that Basquiat, that whatever, where the hood is still trying to process what it is. You know what I mean? Like, oh, man, this is new, right? So it's 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 hard. And also, I want to be somebody who's hella different too, but I want to be relatable. It's, it's so difficult. It's like, it's, yeah. Yeah. I just want to point out real quick that you very casually said, yeah, I had seven comedy shows that night. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? That's a lot. That's a lot yeah. of comedy shows. shows. Yeah. Nine nights. Started yeah. at 4 p.m.? Nah, I started at 6. <laughs> yeah. That is not Dude. average. Yeah. Wow. You're, um, uh, and, and the other night, you were going to like three more shows after the show that, that we had just did. Yeah. Um, man, that hustle, like that, mm-hmm. uh, like, t- tell me more about the work ethic, man. Like, how do you get inspired and motivated to to bam 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 hit it hit it hit it and like still keep the passion up for the comedy that you do actually i would love for you to uh answer that in rap oh the hustle the grind got money on my mind the hustle the grind got money on my mind the hustle the grind got money on my mind the hustle the grind got money on my mind minute 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 mine i got the hustle on it it gets overwhelmed, I smoke the chronic. Bubonic plague, I just write a sonic. Sick, I just be uh, with it on. Oh, I find a way to express myself. And the best way to do it is on stage with help. And I need an audience who be applauding it. And it makes me feel like some awesome shit. Because I am trying to get my dreams. Yes, that is what I meant. And in entertainment, it's like, what is it? Maybe like 0.1% that make it to the top, mm-hmm. sort of like my pops. Yeah. He made it to the NFL. From pure poverty, he was going through hell. Then he found a way to break that spell. And I want to do it too. I saw his work ethic. Now I know how a way I can get it. But it is this way, and I don't mean to be funny. I don't want it if it don't smell like money. The hustle, the grind, got money on my mind. The hustle, the grind, got money on my mind. The hustle, the grind, got money on my mind. The hustle, the grind, got money on my mind. Got the hustle, and Larry got the flow. You know, we over here doing about seven or eight shows. Ooh. Tomorrow, he's gonna do nine. The day after that, he's gonna do ten. Ooh. But he's still gonna be chill. Larry's still gonna be zen. Hey. Over here, keeping all the hood shit in check, too. You know, you gotta relate, cause that's who you respect, who. Gonna go ahead and back you up no matter where you go. You never still give up. The, 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 the hustle, the grind, grind, money on the mind. My hustle, the grind, grind, money on the mind. My the hustle, the grind, grind, the money on my mind. My hustle, the grind, the money on my mind. mind. Oh, Larry, it's your dad. Aren't you glad that I came down sad? Don't you dare laugh. Don't you dare frown. Because you know what? I had that ball, the brown. I was doing football and dancing around. And then I made you, and you didn't make me frown. I was so happy with your little curly hair. I just, I just looked at you. Hey, it's cool. He works so hard that it's almost scary. You see him with the curly hair, yeah, that's Larry. Started from the bottom, now he's going to the top. Call him Larry Hamilton because the man is nonstop. He keeps going, he keeps flowing. Yeah, you want. 
want to see the talent that is what he's showing mm. he keeps going and he does it all day larry came to work but also to play the hustle the grind the money on my mind the hustle the grind the money on my mind my hustle the grind the money on my mind my hustle the grind the money on my mind 9 a.m. show 10 a.m. show 11 a.m. show noon show 1 p.m. show 2 p.m. show 3 p.m. show and that's just how it goes 5 p.m. activism 6 p.m. activism 7 p.m. finding the spiritual community 8 p.m. activism 9 p.m. activism 10 p.m. The hustle, the grind, the money on my mind. Crazy. The hustle, the grind, the money on my mind. Wow. The hustle, the grind, the money on my mind. The hustle, the grind, the money on my mind. Yeah, that was an accurate reflection of your schedule, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. You know, it's hard for me to accept all this praise. Like, you know, being messing with Freestyle Love Supreme and them. You know. I never felt so many people try to show me love. Mm. It's damn near awkward. Cause I grew up, my dad, <laughs> my, is, my my dad used to literally cuss me out every yeah. to this day. I'll show you a text message from him right now. You'll be rolling. <laughs> Hold on, man. <laughs> he's, 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 he's from Longview in Texas. Yeah. And I my dad for in no way or form is a bad person. He my dad's amazing. I love my dad so much. He goes, okay, um, <laughs> I just feel like cuss words are different down there. Like, people just, like, throw them out there like it's nothing. Throw them out just normal verbs. Yeah, he calls me motherfucker every morning. (laughs) (laughs) You his motherfucker. No exaggeration. You his favorite motherfucker. (laughs) Okay, um, so this is from my brother. My brother, um... He like he's real fly. He's fashionable, right? My brother's like a pretty boy. Oh yeah, he is. Yeah, <laughs> my I brother's like. Brother. <laughs> <laughs> he's like taller than me. He's like six one. He played Division one sports. He's like all oh, twelve pack. He's shredded. Like he's a good looking dude. And so he messed. He did like did something. And my dad goes, "Congratulations!" This is a morning text, like six in the morning. <laughs> You are officially a nigga. <laughs> Your credit score is fucked. <laughs> and this is what he said to me. Um, I was like, Uncle Tommy want to talk to you. And he, and he ta- he's messing me back. Go and take the trash out. I said, okay. He goes, thank you. I said, I had a great show tonight here in Portland. And I was like, I, was, I remember we were together. And I was like, grateful for my dad. Thanks for all the wisdom. He said, and I, I texted him like early in the morning. He goes, had a great sli- sleep tonight here in SF. Grateful for my son. Thanks for the early morning text. Did you take the fucking trash out? <laughs> 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 That's my dad. He's a, like, he, like, my dad's the kind of dude. I'm like, when I try to have a spiritual conversation, yeah. I'll be like, dad, do you know who Constantine is? Mm-hmm. He was like, yeah, you constantly not shutting the fuck up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's my dad. <laughs> oh my God. I relate so much to that so my brother growing up uh uh he was bad with his chores and all that and all of a sudden one morning it happened a couple times like he scratched the my dad scratched the heavy trash can in front of my brother's door and he was like take the motherfucking trash out wake your ass up wake your ass up get this fucking trash out now and he would just come back to bed (laughs) i remember there was one christmas you just reminded me there was a christmas we don't celebrate Christmas. I'm, I don't celebrate any holidays, not even my birthday. And um, now it's not some weird like, oh, I don't do it. It's just I just I'm like I'm the hustle, the grind. I rather work. Right. And so, so um, <laughs> it was Christmas. My dad had to wake up at 5 a.m. to do some type of thing, and he bangs on our doors, me and my brother's doors. Bow, bow, bow. This is like I was probably like 17 years old. Bow, bow, bow. Wake the fuck up. It's Christmas, right? <laughs> And I'm like, Dad, you're Muslim, dude. We don't celebrate Christmas. And he was like, I don't care. I got you presents. Go in my room. And I was like, I don't got the key to your room. I know you little niggas know how to break in my room. (laughs) Yeah, right? And so me and my brother get up. We go upstairs. My brother already had a blunt roll. We smoke it. We go back to sleep. <laughs> he calls us, like, and he's, like, blowing our phones up. We pick up, and you can hear, like, snickering in the background, right? And then he goes, did y'all go up in my room? And we're like, no. He's like, go in there now. And we go in the room, and there's two boxes, right? And they're identical size, right? And we grab them, and, and we're like, well, what is this? He's like, open them, right? And we're, like, shaking them. I'm like, what the fuck is this? We open it up, 
he bought two he went to a dollar store and got the two for <laughs> two dollar or some shit like that <laughs> uh, frosted mini wheat cereal <laughs> And he said, Merry fucking Christmas. Go clean the backyard. (laughs) And we didn't even have milk. So I'm just like, what? (laughs) And and he was dying. Like, everybody, you can hear a bunch of people in the background. My dad used to do that, too. Or one Christmas, he, he like, got up, and you could tell he forgot it was Christmas and went down the street, truly, like, one minute down the road, Got a scratch off. <laughs> 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 like, Dad, you're an electrical engineer. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> He's still like Louisiana. But uh, one more. Black too. fathers are important. There's, I love They're my important. dad so much. Oh my god, because he was always like, yeah, like women can do sides. You better get in there. And when I was experiencing a lot of racism and STEM and all this stuff, he was like, man, fuck them. You better do fucking <laughs> that physics, man. And he's like, what? Let them know what that STEM about. Right, but then like bang on my door, and be like, there are dishes in the sink. <laughs> And that's, and that's <laughs> like, it's like, Dad, it's for you. There are dishes in the sink. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hilarious. That's why they should be friends. <laughs> oh, for sure. He loves the dollar store. <laughs> uh, I don't you, have any... Oh, go ahead, Sam. You mentioned, I believe, at 18, making a 100-year plan. Yeah. Which is super great that you are going to live 118 years, which I believe. <laughs> if anyone's going to do it, it's you. I um, hope. But... I am curious, what are a couple of the things on that list that you have accomplished that you're proud of? And what are a few of the big things that are on that list that you're looking forward to happening in the future? Great question. Great question. Um, skydiving. Mm. Oh. Is that which, which side I, of the list I did. That? I did, did it? it. You did it. Oh, you did How it. was that experience for you? Life changing. Yeah. Wow. Oh, my gosh. That's it was a trip. It was a trip. I, you know, it's funny after I did it, because, you know, we all got conspiracy brothers in our life, right? Mm-hmm. And so one of my <laughs> homies, right after I did it, he mess- texted me, he goes, is it true? And I'm all like, is what true? <laughs> and he goes, is the world really flat? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no. He's like, are you sure? I'm like, bro, I love you, bro, but come on, bro, stop. But um, <laughs> it really, like, it really. It was so beautiful. Has anybody been skydiving up in here? I would love to go. No, I haven't. Okay. It it was, and you know, I was hyped. Mm. You know, let me tell you something, though. Let me tell you something. I was just talking to my little cousin about this. Growing up, right, I was the class clown. I would do wild shit for laughs. Like in elementary, I remember cutting my hair with scissors and ah, in the classroom, oh everybody God. laughing. I remember like <laughs> my teacher went to the bathroom, but she left her heels and I went and got in her heels and I was like walking around the class like fourth grade oh I, it, it was they were rolling and she was coming back and I put her shoes in my backpack and stole her shoes and shit and she was she was like oh has the shoes and then it it was thievery which I transitioned into crime right so growing up doing daredevil stuff a lot of people would want to be do it with me but then they'll get nervous growing up doing crime, right? Because I've stolen over 60 cars to myself, statute of limitations. And so, (laughs) the camera's right there. I've robbed people, I've sold drugs, everything you hear in rap songs, I've done. Like, nothing Mm. like violent or sexual stuff, but like, when it comes to like capitalistic type things, Mm. I've done it, right? And so, and I lived it. And um, so, people would always want to be cool, right? They would want to be down, like, man, I want to go with you or I want to do this. Can you teach me how to steal a car? Like right now it's trending Kia boys, right? Like I was a Kia boy, <laughs> right? And so every time it came down to hit a lick or do something, they would get nervous, right? Then when I got into activism, every time it was time to do some like a real ass, you know, action, right? Where it's like camp in front of city hall, walk a hundred miles. I, I was in Standing Rock, all these different things that I've done with activism, they're extreme, you, you know, jail time, a lot of crazy stuff could have happened, right? people would get scared. And so it was skydiving, the same thing happened. I had hella people who wanted to do it, and the last minute it was just four of us, right? Hmm. And it, luckily all four of us were like ready to do it. Nobody was scared or saying hella. Like one of our friends who like scattered last minute was like, you know, the statistics. And he's like, send us statistics. We're like, we don't want to see the statistics, man. We just want to do this. But um, in the beginning, it was, I was like the most hyped. I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm ready to jump. I want to go first. And then the dude heard me and he was like, you know what? You're going to go last. And I was like, why do I got, I want to go first though. He's like, nah, because usually the last person gets scared. So we want the most enthusiastic person to go last. Oh, so it's the least chance of them 
like going, I don't want to do it. Yeah. Oh, because there's someone me. behind you. And right when it was my turn, I had I have a video of it on, on online. You can see me. My, I freeze. I can't move. Mm. And the dude, I, I pay for like a dude a video record. He, you can see him grab my leg and move it for me. Mm. And then I'm like standing there, and I was it was like split seconds. I was about to tell the dude the the dude behind me tandem. He was a German dude, right? He was hella cool. And I I, I was gonna tell him like I don't know if I want to do this. Mm -hmm. And before I could say that, I was already in the air. I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> right? like here we go. <laughs> yep. It was twenty thousand feet, and it was um. Or 18. And it was um, I, I, right after, I was I want to do it again. You know, but I'm not going to drop another $300 now. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> and then, when you're landing, don't you have to pick up your legs or something like that? Yeah, so yeah. You got to lift legs. up hella hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you slide in kind of like on your butt. And then you like, yeah, yeah. It was cool. I, I recommend it to everybody. Yeah. Well, where did you do it? I had a friend that did it in Hawaii. So you got a really good view. I did it in California. California. I did it in the, the like the historical fact about it is I did it where Jimi Hendrix first did it. Oh, yeah, yeah. okay. He was in the army, and so his, when he was learning how to jump out of planes, he did it in the same place I did. It's called a little small beach town called Monterey. Okay. Yeah, oh, Monterey. yeah right on. <clears throat> Have you done any research with Native American tribes, like in Louisiana, Texas area? Because I just started to talk to my grandpa about um, they were part of the Seminole tribe and the Kansas Blackfoot tribe, and trying to learn like my history that way and. All of that's been very interesting to like be more in touch with uh, my Native American side because I don't know that much about it just because they uh, my ancestors like escaped from slavery and then like joined a Native American tribe and then yeah. they settled in Kansas and I, I don't know it's it's so hard to find information yeah and yeah. it's difficult too because right now there's like a process of eliminating black people from the tribe right mm -hmm. and a lot of black folks are trying to fight like even though we're black we've been a part of the tribe for so long right you know we deserve to be a we're family you know it's it's there's complexities and i'm always willing to be wrong and i believe in epistemology so if i don't have enough information i'm not going to try to speak on it or give opinion so i i can't yeah you know i don't know that much about louisiana natives so i can't really yeah. jump into it unfortunately that's okay me either and i can't wait to learn more honestly yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's 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 that's for me being black like you go to africa you're gonna see black people running stuff but my being indigenous like you don't see too many native americans in the americas like in like bolivia had a native american president which was dope but a lot of places don't really it's like if you go to latin america you're going to see the people at the bottom are the African descendants because 95% of slaves went to Latin America. And then you're going to see the indigenous people and we're, they're just always at the bottom, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. Was there uh, anything else that you accomplished so far in your 100-year plan? Uh, oh, yeah. Damn near everything. Oh, the next, the literally, the, literally the only thing left is to move to New York, mm -hmm. right? And then from there, see, I, I have things that are like I could actually accomplish. Like there's like... Think like SNL and all the like I want to be do some Jordan Peele stuff because like my ultimate goal I want to do like Afrofuturism but instead of you know he does like sci-fi and horror I want to do adventure fantasy because oh, yeah. because oh, I've oh, always yeah. loved Lord of the Rings Harry Potter all these movies but I never saw myself in it and mm -hmm. I always thought a black approach would have been way different Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. Lord of the Rings is some niggas, you know what I mean? Like one <laughs> one dude would have had all the rings on his hand, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> bling bling, <laughs> you know. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right? You know, it's so a black adventure fantasy. <laughs> oh. it's a black adventure fantasy. Oh. oh, it's a black adventure fantasy. Hey, hey. Black wizards. Black knights, yeah. black people H. fight for black rights, oh. black magic, black love, hey. all these black people down and above. Oh. I want to see black fantasy. I want to see people who look like you and me. Oh. I want to see black fantasy on the screen. Black fantasy is what we need. Oh. Black future fantasy. fantasy. Yeah, that's right. It's, it's a, a black, black future adventure fantasy. fantasy. Or adventure fantasy. Oh, it's, it's a, a black, black adventure fantasy. fantasy. <laughs> It's, it's a, a black, black adventure, adventure fantasy. fantasy. Hey, what if there was like a black 
black princess. And then she was just like, uh-uh, I'm getting a recess. I don't want your black princess. I would rather go somewhere and smoke some grass. Ooh, or maybe there should be a black alien and she talks like this and she is an alien. And then she goes and goes, I want to be a comedy writer. And then she comes to Earth and tries to do her dreams. <laughs> it's a black adventure fantasy. It's a black adventure fantasy. It's a black adventure fantasy. Uh, yeah, talking about a son and a daughter when they look at a black Harry Potter. Uh, Harry Potter with the P-O-T space T-E-R. Because he'd be smoking up them doobies every fucking dark. Uh, and yeah, talking about Hermione. Big Heine. Talking about things that remind me of a future fantasy like Ganondorf. Ganondorf, man, motherfucker needs support. It's a black future fantasy. It's a black adventure fantasy. It's spelling what? It's a black adventure fantasy. Nigga spells. It's a black adventure fantasy. There was a unicorn wearing a uniform. It could read hieroglyphics and cuneiform. It could read ancient Samaria. Her name was Aria. <laughs> and she caused hysteria because she discovered something in the 51 area. She f- uh, uh, extraterrestrial. She uh, 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 started stuttering because she couldn't really utter it. The CIA really tried to get her and cover it. They tried to smother it and that no other kid get in that same predicament. She was so into it. Let me tell you about a different immigrant. Let me tell you about this person who was Indian, American. You know, the vision that I'm staring in is Jordan Peele, something like that, and I am carrying. Uh, I'm like, let Larry in. I want to do something different, not scary when. I want to make it more adventure. It's all about love. It's not about business ventures. It's a black adventure fantasy. About love. It's, it's a, a black adventure fantasy. fantasy. It's, it's a, a black adventure fantasy. It's a black dragon. It's, it's a, a black adventure fantasy. fantasy. It's not an afro. Yeah. <laughs> I see a dragon. Just turn around. Go home and sit on the fucking couch. Hey. I ain't fucking with that. I'm going to watch Beyonce. That dragon up there, he can have himself a nice fun day. Uh, mm, Let's talk all. about black magic. Why does that have to be bad, okay? Why is white magic the thing we aspire to? I don't think that's so rad. I think black magic is good. Black magic is great. It should be what we embrace and not what we hate. Oh. We need new people in the writer's room. So, Larry, I hope you get that contract soon. Yeah. Oh, black like adventure. Adventure. Fantasy. Black Luke Skywalker. It's, it's a, a black, black adventure, adventure fantasy. fantasy. <laughs> it's, it's a black adventure fantasy. fantasy. It's, it's a, a black, black adventure, adventure fantasy. fantasy. Thank you so much. You've been listening to the North Coast Podcast. Like, subscribe, follow, check out more episodes. There's shows, there's classes, there's all kinds of great stuff. Thank you for joining us, Larry. Yeah, reparations. And we'll see you next time. Thanks. <laughs> 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 <laughs>